let's talk the annoying subject of if Batman kills or if Batman uses a gun. Zack Snyder was at a Q&A last week and he talked to Justice League. And the facts of the films kind of came out. That Justice League was a two-part film. That basically most of the heroes were defeated. And the events that happened in Batman vs Superman were a direct lead-in to those Justice League films, forming a trilogy. There's two camps here. One, everyone loves Snyder. They think he is a god. He thinks he is untouchable. They think every single thing that he does is the most amazing thing ever, and that he breaks down the dichotomy of superhero films to make something a little different. And then there are the Snyder decriers. There are those who think that he is the worst thing ever in cinematic history, that he fucked up Batman and he fucked up Superman that he doesn't know storytelling or he doesn't know superheroes because most of all people can't get past the part that Batman uses guns or Batman kills. I don't get it because there have been points where Batman has used a gun and there has been points where Batman has killed. For some odd reason those who love the Batman not killing and not using guns can't get past when he uses guns when he kills. Batman has used a gun in the comic books. We can show a picture of Batman holding a gun and someone will say, hey, you know what? But Batman doesn't shoot the gun. You could show a picture of Batman shooting a gun. And he said, well, Batman doesn't shoot people. You could show a Batman shooting somebody and they say, all right, that's fine. But then later on, uh, Batman develops as a character and therefore he learns his lesson and won't shoot anybody else. It makes no sense. It makes no sense to me. In the films, Batman is killed in the Tim Burton movies. He's killed in the Joel Schumacher movies. He's killed in the Christopher Nolan movies. And he's killed in the Zack Snyder movies. Batman kills. Batman uses guns. And whether it's something that he's holding, if it's a bat pod or it's the Batmobile or that little bat plane thing that he had, Batman is shooting the gun. I think the problem with this argument is, if someone came to me and said, you know what, 99% of the time, Batman doesn't kill. 99% of the time, Batman doesn't use guns. He uses his mind to be able to get past that and be the better person. That I can accept. However, most of the time it's, Batman doesn't kill and Batman doesn't use guns. Well, when asked for proof, we can go all the way back to Bob Kane, Bill Finger, and Batman, the creators. Do you know what happened in the old school Batman in the Golden Age? Batman had a gun. Batman killed people. As time went on, Batman is said to have advanced himself to the point where he doesn't use guns and he doesn't kill people. This is called storytelling. The ability to have a character change and grow. But you can't really have it both ways. And this is what I mean. If you have Batman here who kills and uses a gun, and then he comes down here to a point where he doesn't kill and he doesn't use a gun because of storytelling, then also because of that storytelling, he should be able to then go back and use a gun and kill people. That people will say, you can't do that because Batman doesn't use guns and doesn't kill people. But the storytelling aspects here have moved him from here to here. And certainly the storytelling aspect can also move from here to here. You can't have it both ways. Either you stick with the original as Bob Kane and Bill Finger invented the Batman or you allow authors, writers, screenwriters to be able to tell their own Batman story. But there is some sort of breakdown with Batman fans. And the thing is, logic doesn't always work. And it happens no matter who I talk to, if it's friends, people on Facebook, it always breaks down. Because I can sit here and lose logic over and over and over again and there's just a point where like humor needs to come out or making fun of somebody needs to come out they have the inability because it's a conversation that they can't win that they're going to start mocking the hell out of people and there's nothing that pisses me off more than that even my friends who are like but 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 when you point out the fact of the simple storytelling batman was like this he became this and certainly he become this again they get stuck down here like batman is now this and he can't change he can change. We're going to tackle today one thing. If Batman can use a gun and if he can kill. Today we're going to talk about the films and not the comic books. And the reason for that is I have a very special audio guest for today's vlog. Just a few days after the Zack Snyder news broke about Justice League, I got to talk to Michael Uslan. 
I was interviewing Michael for an upcoming episode of my series based on it. Shameless plug that you can watch right here on YouTube. I was interviewing him for the upcoming Swamp Thing episode because he produced both Swamp Thing and Return of Swamp Thing. But the other thing that Michael has produced is every single Batman film since 1989. If there's a movie with Batman in it, if there's a cartoon movie with Batman in it, Michael has his hands on it. Because he is the man who got the rights to Batman back in the 80s, and he is the man that oversees an entire franchise. So I asked Michael, I said, Michael, is Batman able to kill? Is he able to use guns in the movies? And the answer was pretty stunning. Ladies and gentlemen, Michael Guslin. If I have any last question, it's probably not a Swamp Thing question, only because Zack Snyder like a day or two ago, had said, um, had touched on Batman killing in Batman versus Superman. And of course, when Zack Snyder talks, everything's ablaze from Titter to my personal Facebook with everyone, like, Batman doesn't kill, and Batman does kill, and the movie was great. The movie was horrible. Um, you've produced, I think, every Batman, right? Going from Batman 89 to every cartoon, every feature film. Yeah. What, what is your stance on this? Is it sort of, you don't have to give me like, yes, I think Batman should kill, but as a producer, do you sort of give that leeway to your writer and director, you know, like make the character your own, and if he does what he does, you know, that's, I guess, the fallback falls on you. You know, the original uh, contract with DC Comics calls for Batman to be treated as he is reflected in the comics. So if, as you look at the comics, um, I can show you issues where Batman's tossing people off of a roof or machine gunning uh, monsters or whatever it might be. And I can show you those where he will would never kill a, a pure Lone Ranger kind of stuff. Um, one of the one of the lines that I love the most was in The Dark Knight Rises, uh, where Batman and Catwoman are facing all these guys. And he says, you know, no guns. Yeah, like never. Um, I, I I just love that moment. Love that moment. Um, so to me, it becomes a function of the times, a function of the filmmaker, and being true to the integrity of a character. In his eighty-year run, you've got an awful lot of leeway to play with, and uh, and so I think you've really got to turn that decision over. Um, not to what, not to a legal word here or there, but to a filmmaker's interpretation of the character. And if it's treated with integrity and respect, and true to and reflective of the way he has been treated in the comics, then I think you're okay. Um, yes, I would be terribly upset if um, you know the next Batman movie had Tweedledee and Twiddledum and a lot of pow zaps and whams. Um, because I, I, that is not, to me, true to the integrity of what was created by Bob Kane, Bill Finger, added to by Jerry Robinson and so many other great writers and artists over the decades. Um, so I, I, I think, generally speaking, you've got to give your filmmakers some latitude. There's your answer. And it really is kind of not black and white, is it? It's not Batman can kill and Batman can't kill. I'd love to hear your thoughts, positive and negative. So be sure to like, unlike, comment, subscribe, unsubscribe, whatever. My name is Ryan from 2G1. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll catch you next vlog.